Hello everyone, Trix here. Part 2 of Super Mario 3, or Super Mario Bros 3. Mostly short Super Mario 3 or Mario 3. Call it whatever you like. Just say Mario 3 and people know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Alright, 1-6 is where we were. It was Mario's turn. I'm doing a Mario and Luigi playthrough. Because why not? The game gives you the option to pick both brothers. And I prefer that, if that is a possibility. Mario and Luigi have a little bit of a difference. I explained this in the first part. It's not nothing too major. The difference definitely were bigger in Mario 1, The Lost Levels and Mario 2. But it's definitely still present here. Even though the original, it was not present at all. If you picked Mario and Luigi in the original version, you can only do it through multiplayer in that one. If you do pick Mario and Luigi through the multiplayer, you will find out that Mario and Luigi control exactly the same there. That's something that changed a little bit in this game. That thing about Luigi they introduced in Mario The Lost Levels, where he jumps higher, skits around a little and falls a little bit slower than Mario, has also been, has also been made a little bit present in this game. Right, it's time for our first overworld hindrance, the Hammer Bros, the overworld Hammer Bros. Whenever you meet one, you are forced into, into the course. It's not like uh, these other courses that you move to them, press A and you go in them. If you move to this Hammer Bro, you are automatically taken in. This is a forced fight. And the goal in these is simple, kill all the enemies, it's mostly Hammer Bros. Sometimes Boomerang Bros. Fire Bros can be any of them. Anyway, just kill all of them. And you get awarded with an item. Which we now have in our item selection. At least Luigi has it. Also something I can point out now that I see it. Mario and Luigi, if you do multiplayer or single player and pick both of the brothers, they both have their same... Uh, their own item wheel. Their... They do not share items. That said, Mario's getting another item. I just always pick the middle one. I th don't think it really matters. It's pretty much random what you get. No matter which one you pick, so might as well just go for the middle one. And with that, World 1 has been completely cleared. I did not get the blue mushroom house in this... But that's not really required for 100%. That's just bonus. And I might get it later, because, of course, once you've cleared the game, you can play levels over again, you can get it then if you want to. But there's nothing really uh, saying you have to get it if, you, if you're going for, for 100%. It's just a little bit of an extra. So, I don't, I'm not gonna care. All we have left is this final level, the castle. Let's head in. Oh, it's terrible. The king has been transformed. Please find the magic wand so we can change him back. But I don't wanna. I like him as a snake. It's a cobra, actually, from Mario 2. If <laughs> you look closely. Eh, who wants to be human if you can be reptile? Come on. Alright, every final world, uh, final course in a world. Here we go again with the terms. It's always a. Uh, Airship. Un airship. Come on, English. Auto scroll, of course. But unlike um, most of the Mario games, where the final course is always a castle, this game decided to do it a little bit differently. We are actually boarding the airships the Koopalings are using to seize all of these castles in the different uh, regions of the Mushroom Kingdom. They took away the wand of the kings, they transformed them, but they didn't get very far apparently because the airship was still around the castle, so uh, you can easily board it. Right, here's the first of our Koopalings, Larry Koopa. Of course the easiest one, he just jumps around, shoots his wand a little bit. Don't worry if you get hit. You don't get transformed to an, into an animal, you just get uh, regularly hit, <laughs> sort of say. Just jump on them three times and you win. 
And of course, the further we get, the more challenging these Koopalings become. And once we beat them, the airship completely disappears and we fall from the sky. And you know Mario in his 2D platformers, he can survive any fall. Oh, splendid, splendid. I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here's a letter from the princess. Yeah, what we're doing for the country does not go unnoticed by the princess. Hey, Peach. Greetings. If you see any ghosts, be careful. They will give chase if you turn away. I have enclosed a jewel that helps protect you. Princess Toadstool. And we get an item. The P-Wing. What does the P-Wing do? I'm going to explain this now because I'm never going to use it. The P-Wing is basically a raccoon leaf. Only it's a super powerful raccoon leaf. If you use this, you do not only turn raccoon Mario, but you also get infinite P. That's the reason it's called P-Wing. Your P meter never runs out, and you know what the P meter does in this game. It makes you fly when you have Raccoon Mario. So it basically is infinite flight. You can use this if you meet up with a challenge you cannot face. If this game, basically said, becomes too hard for you. Then you can use this to cheese any level you like. And of course, I am never going to use one. Just explaining what it does. World 2, kind of turning into a tradition. World 2 in a Mario level is always, in a Mario game is always a desert world. That is a written rule. <laughs> it sort of is. At least every single one of the new Super Mario Bros games do it. It's always desert levels. Even Super Mario Odyssey, the second level, is a desert world. The second actual level, not, count not, uh, not counting the introduction level. Oh, Super Mario Odyssey, I can't wait to play you. That's a long ways away. Let's focus on Mario 3 for now. This is also a pretty fun game. Who am I kidding? This game is old. This game is dated. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hell yeah. Bouncy, bouncy. Yeah, this world introduces a couple of new enemies. You've seen the mini goom the, Yeah, they're called mini Goombas, I believe. They are hidden in those blocks. They count as an enemy. Just stomp on them to get rid of them. I was going for a bonus, but apparently I'm not because I got hit. <laughs> How did I not get hit there? But of course, I know where my raccoon leaves are. So I'm gonna try again. Go up here. You can only come here if you, if, you, if you can fly, of course. Bonus! Right, a new mechanic introduced here. P blocks don't own. Uh, P switches don't just uh, turn coins into blocks and coins in, uh, blocks into coins. Yeah, it's more complicated than it sounds. <laughs> but sometimes there are also. These hidden white coins, they only appear if P-switch is pressed. So it's uh, kind of a mystery where, where they are. But you can use that to wreck in your coins. You can of course also go in these little niches here to get some extra goodies. So one up here, a couple of loose coins here and there, mostly here. And there's another one over there, nothing too special. Grab them if you are worried about game overing. I am not, by the way. I am going to try to keep this a no-death playthrough for as long as I can. I know I have been able to clear this game without dying at some point. I don't count on it happening now because I am distracted like hell. Even talking is hard enough for me if you haven't noticed. Because this game is distracting me, but I'm also distracting myself by talking. See if I can go for three stars for Mario. And I can. Get an extra epic ending screen if you get three of them. And you get your one ups. Ooh, Spade House. And Luigi's going to be forced into one <laughs> because it appears on the start. Right, another mini game. 
flip over any two cards and see if they match. Miss twice and you're out. Sounds complicated if you see it like here, but it's just a memory match. Flip two cards and see if they match. If they do not, you lose. You get one more chance. Get two from right and you can try again. It is that easy. And whatever item you uh, get, whenever you flip two cards, you can keep. So I just got a f fire flower and a mushroom. And this is where it ends. And don't worry about missing anything, because if you are... Uh, what am I trying to say? If, it, um, if you find another one of these spade houses, the minigame continues where you were. It's not like you have to... Um, Start all the way from the beginning again. That was what I was trying to say. Right here we have the other, the, the slot machine variant. Let's try this again. Once again going for the mushroom apparently. And this time I do get it. Two up. It's the lowest you can score, but it counts. Right, uh, one thing I ha did, not, did not mention in the first part, but it was already present in the first world, these doors. You cannot pass these doors. All of these doors are always unlocked once you beat a s special level, mostly fortress levels. They, for the most part, act as short shortcuts on the map, that if you game over later in the world, you can use these shortcuts to get back to where you were quicker. Because uh, game overs might explain it now because I'm highly doubt I'm going to game over in this game so I might uh, might as well talk about it now if you game over in this game no matter where you game over on the world you are automatically flinked back to the start of the world every single course you cleared is once again active so you have to clear them again but there is one exception to this rule if you game over all of the doors that have been cleared from the map stay cleared from the map. As you can see, this door leads to a pipe. The pipe leads to the other pipe on the map. So if you happen to game over in the final part of the world, you can skip world 2-1, 2 and the fortress level. So you don't always have to do the entire world over again if you game over. That's how game overs work. You do not get flinked back to the start of the game. You just get flinked back to the start of the world you are in when you game over it. Everything resets with the exception of doors you have cleared. I hope that is clear. Because I do not plan on game overing in this game. <laughs> Alright, this is another level where you have to collect coins. In order to unlock a blue mushroom house. Let's see if I can do it this time. If I do not, I am not going to fret about it, because once again, I do not plan on making this uh, get all of the mushroom houses let's play. That is not required for 100%, so I'm not going to bother. I am going to try, and I already failed, because I forgot there are, were four more coins over there. Alright, second failure. Am I going to see a blue mushroom house display through? I highly doubt it, if I'm going to continue this. Just for shape, try to get all of the other coins. So if you are trying and you are successful, at least you can see where all of the coins are. I'm going to get my first death in this level, apparently. No, maybe not. Well, there are four more coins here. You have to have the P-Switch active still. It, it does not respawn. This is not Mario Maker or Mario Maker 2, that when you leave a room and re-enter it, the P-switches appear, reappear. No, this is not the case. But you do need all of the coins in this world in order to get the Blue Mushroom House. And it still appeared. I was pretty sure at this level you had to get all of them. Well, this is how the Blue Mushroom Houses work. I did not count on this one appearing, but apparently you don't need all of the coins. You can miss four. Well, take that in account. Blue Mushroom House. Hello, you found my shop of strange and wonderful things.
It is an anchor. Um, yeah, I might as well talk about it now. I wanted to do it when I did the castle back just a few minutes ago, but I forgot, to be honest. Man, the distraction. <laughs> I had so many topics I wanted to talk about, and I'm forgetting every single one of them. <laughs> the anchors in this game... Whenever you play these uh, castle levels, and I don't mean these fortresses, but the actual castles at the end of the world, the ones where you get uh, the airship levels, where you uh, use the castles to enter the airships the Koopa Links are using, if you happen to die on one of, your, of these airship levels, it does not work in the way a normal level works, that when you die you can just simply go back to the course and try again. Airships actually start moving away from the castle whenever you die. So you have to chase them all over the map in order to try again. This can, especially in the later worlds, when the world maps become bigger and more complicated, be a big burden. But if you have an anchor in your item selection, you can actually use that anchor to prevent the ship from leaving. So you can just stay on the castle spot or any other spot you happen to be on when uh, the ship already moves. And it won't move again. The anchor will keep the ship in play. Yeah, I will talk about Boom Boom later. I was in the middle of another topic. <laughs> as you can see, I cleared a fortress which counts as a special course and a door disappears and the disappearing door does not just give us access to a shortcut pipe but also a mushroom house and a Luigi like the mushrooms but I like the fire flowers even more might as well use one right, let's take the shortcut pipe so we can sh uh, show that off too you don't immediately get warped to the other side of the map on the overworld. You actually have to do a little bit of a uh, course, kind of. <laughs> and then you appear on the other side. And I'm forced into a hammer bro fight here. Which is a boomerang bro in this case. We've already seen them in the World 1. They do not throw hammers, they throw boomerangs. A little bit of a variance, but basically the same enemy. And this one gave us, gave us a music box. The music box is also something I do not plan on using because it interferes with the 100% playthrough I have planned. Music boxes actually put asleep any overworld hindrances. They can be the boomerang bros, the hammer bros, or some other enemies that we meet later. They are always forced courses, as you may have seen. You are forced into them. You cannot skip them. But if you move, if you use a move, uh, music box. You can actually put them to sleep for two turns, and with the turn I mean you enter a level, you exit the level, counts as one turn, then you do another level, counts as two turns. For that long all of the overworld enemies will fall asleep and they do not get activated if you pass them. I of course do not use it because clearing all of the overworld events is definitely 100% business so I am not going to use the music boxes but if you are annoyed by the hammer bros or something else in the overworld you can use the music box to skip them or at least get the chance to skip them because it does not work indefinitely right this uh, is kind of a pyramid level there's stuff hidden up here yeah, as I said, there's stuff hidden up here. There's these hidden blocks everywhere. Giving you an opportunity to get up here. And I fell. <laughs> and there's coins up here. There's more stuff up here. But I think you can... Use a fine somewhere or something. There's a fine hidden here. Ah, the Koopas are, all, are both stuck now. <laughs> That's not really needed. You can just jump from up here. Works just as fine. 
P switch and all of the pyramids down here are now coins. So you can use this for uh, one-up grinding. Because that's mostly where coins are used for. Right, this part is fun. Use the Cooper shells to clear a pathway. Wait for it to pass. Otherwise it's just dangerous for you. Cooper shells hurt. In case you didn't know. Right, and another level clear and another video done because I see 20 minutes on my screen. And you know what that means. It means the platforming is over for today. And we are going to continue with that tomorrow. And we'll be starting off with our second chance at the memory match I see. Right, there's tons of stuff I still like to point out. Because, but I'm not simply not getting the chance because all of the things are coming all at once in this game. This game does not give you a chance to <laughs> breathe. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Tricks out. <laughs>